light. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. That's seven and a half times around the Earth in one second. That is fast. A light year is the distance light travels in one year. Light years are one of the standard distance measurements in astronomy. St. Augustine said light, even though it passes through pollution, is not polluted. Light is pure. Light is constant. Light is life-giving. Without light, you have darkness. Darkness and death go together. Light and life go together. Light can dispel darkness and always will. Darkness cannot dispel light. God is light. The Word of God, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of Him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. Isaiah 60, verse 19. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. John 1, verse 4, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. John 1, verse 9, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. John 8, verse 12, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Seeds. Seeds are the tiny hard capsules from which most new plants grow. Seeds develop from the plant's egg once it is fertilized by pollen. Each seed contains the new plant in embryo form, plus a store of food to feed it until it grows leaves. The seed is wrapped in a hard shell known as a testa. Some fruit contain many seeds. Nuts are fruit with a single seed in which the outside has gone hard. After maturing, seeds go into a state called dormancy. While they are dormant, the seeds are scattered and dispersed. Some scattered seeds fall on barren ground and never grow into plants. Only those seeds that fall in suitable places will begin to grow. The world's biggest tree, the giant redwood, grows from a tiny seed that is less than two millimeters long. From one watermelon seed grows a watermelon plant with a delicious watermelon fruit. Within the fruit, there's hundreds of watermelon seeds, which came from the one seed. The Word of God, Matthew 13, verse 18, the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that receiveth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Ants. The example of the small yet mighty ant is remarkable. It is proverbial for industry in every country. It is fondly attached to its young, works quietly, unweariedly, without interfering with others, works for the good of the community with astonishing organization. The ants are ingenious carpenters and masons building their own systems of homes and underground tunnels. They keep their homes meticulously clean. Each has a definite job in life for the good of the community. They will fight to the death to protect their own homes or young. They will not shirk heavy loads and will cooperate to bear them. They are set forth as an example for wisdom. We need to ponder their example and apply those wise qualities in our lives. And so we have here an exhortation to diligence and labor and against indolence and slumber. 
Slumber is more than just lying in bed. It is mental drifting and inactivity, spiritual laziness, natural self-indulgence, and self-pleasing. It is high time to awake out of sleep, cast off the works of darkness, put on the armor of light. The Word of God, Proverbs 6, 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise. Proverbs 30, 25. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. Geese. A flock of geese fly in winged formation. How they know how to do this is because God put it into geese to do this instinctively. In fact, much of what scientists have learned in the area of flight has been gathered by studying birds. By flying in formation, geese can travel much farther than traveling in individual flying patterns. The one downside of flying in a wing formation is that the leader of the flock bears the brunt of air resistance. The leader during a long flight will therefore need to be relieved and switch places with other geese to get a needed rest. A lesson learned, we too should be concerned about our leader's well-being and help them if we can. The geese also fly in team. When they speak, they honk. What they're doing is encouraging one another. In essence, they're saying to their leaders in the front who can't see those behind them, we're still with you. We're behind you all the way. Keep at it. A lesson learned, we should each do his part while fulfilling our God-given role as we travel through life's journey. When a goose in a flock gets sick or injured, it is never left alone. Two of the geese immediately drop out to care for the sick or injured goose. They will stay with it until it recovers or dies and then rejoin a passing formation. A lesson learned, we should always care for our friends and loved ones when they are sick or are going through trouble. Dolphins. Dolphins can live up to 50 years. Dolphins are mammals. Dolphins breathe through their blowholes on the top of their heads. Dolphins live together in groups or families called pods. Dolphins each have a unique signature whistle similar to a person's voice. Almighty God created dolphins to be beautiful, gregarious creatures full of life and cheer. A lesson learned, we should always be joyful and live life to the fullest under God. Dolphins are natural helpers to man. There are many accounts of dolphins protecting people from shark attacks. Lesson learned, we are to help people and offer them protection and encouragement. Psalm 100, Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Within its pages there are written well over 2,000 prophecies that have been fulfilled, promises that had and have no human probability of coming true, Yet they did and do come true, all attesting to its divine inspiration. The Holy Bible is the most translated book in the world as well as the most published and most read book in history. It is the only book that answers the fundamental questions of life, including mankind's origins, purpose, and future. The Holy Bible's words transcend all eras of history. Its words stand the test of time. Though written over a period of 1,500 years in three different languages and completed almost 2,000 years ago, the Holy Bible speaks to the hearts of people today. Moreover, the words written in the Holy Scriptures are affirmed by tens of thousands of archaeological discoveries. There has never been one archaeological find that has refuted one Bible reference. The Holy Bible is the most historically and archaeologically documented book in history. The Holy Bible has also been and is tremendously persecuted, but it still remains. 
It has been and is mocked, scorned, outlawed, censored, and burned. Yet the Holy Bible stands and proclaims its message year after year, generation after generation, century after century, government after government. Its very presence after thousands of years of persecution is a fulfillment of the scriptural promise that it would remain until the end of the world. The words written within the sacred scriptures are the foundation of truth and will be until the end of history. Over 3,000 times the Holy Bible specifically uses phrases such as God said, God commands, thus saith the Lord. In many accounts such as the account of creation in Genesis, there were no human eyewitnesses, but God communicated to Moses, the human author of Genesis, God's word. The Word of God, Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament, from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day, the Sun, located 93 million miles from planet Earth, diameter 865,000 miles, 109 times bigger than Earth, surface temperature 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit. If the Sun were any closer to the Earth, we would burn up, and if the Sun were any farther away, we would freeze. The Lord is amongst His infinite attributes, light and love. He is the source of light, love, life, and all blessings. Matthew 5, 45, That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Matthew 13, 43, Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Matthew 17, 2, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. The moon reflects light from the sun. Christians reflect light from the Lord. Those who do not have the light of the Lord walk in darkness. The moon is one-fourth the size of the earth. The moon's distance from the earth is 250,000 miles. The moon's gravity helps control the ocean tides. The tides are actually cleaning the oceans. Without the tides, sea life and ocean plant life would die. 
leaving us without sufficient oxygen. The tides of the oceans do not overflow the seashore, nor do they become stagnant. God's care for us is infinite. His laws of nature are sure, just as are all his commands. Mark 13, 24. But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. Acts 2, 20. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. Revelation 21, 23. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Rainbows. When you see a rainbow, it is after rain. The sun is always behind you, and the rain in front of you when a rainbow appears. So the center of the rainbow's arc is directly opposite the sun. Every person sees their own personal rainbow. When you look at one, you are seeing the light bounced off of certain raindrops. But when the person standing next to you looks at the same rainbow, they may see the light reflecting off other raindrops from a completely different angle. In addition, everyone sees colors differently according to light and how their eyes interpret it. According to the Holy Bible, a rainbow is the beauty and power of God's promise that he would never again destroy the world with a flood. A rainbow is heaven's promise in technicolor. The promises of God are sure. People accept the promises in different degrees. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Revelation 4.3, And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. Revelation 10.1, and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. No two snowflakes are exactly alike, though there is no scientific reason for this astounding fact. Every snowflake has six sides. Billions of snowflakes fall during even the shortest of snowstorms. The largest snowflakes ever recorded fell in Montana and were 15 inches in diameter. Lesson learned. God never makes duplicates. He only makes originals. Isaiah 1.18 Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Matthew 28, 3, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, His countenance was like lightning, and His raiment white as snow. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Lions are renowned for their majesty and nicknamed the king of the jungle. The lion possesses both beauty and strength. The lion's top speed, 50 miles per hour for short distances. A lion can leap up to 36 feet. The distance over which its roar can be heard is five miles. A lion's average weight is 330 to 500 pounds. A lion's lifespan is 13 years, although they may live longer in captivity. The only social member of the cat family, lions live in large groups called prides, consisting of about 15 lions. They inhabit grassy plains, savannas, open woodlands, and scrub country. These landscapes allow the hunters to creep stealthily through vegetation and leap upon their unsuspecting prey. In the Holy Bible, Satan is referred to as a devouring lion, so be on guard.
The Lord Jesus Christ is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings. Victory and life are only found in Him. 2 Timothy 4.17 Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. 1 Peter 5.8 be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Revelation 5, 5 And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. The rock badger makes his home in crags and crevices of rocky outcrops and cliffs. The home of the rock badger also provides ideal protection from wind and rain. People should place their total trust in the Lord in the same way. The Lord, who is our place of safety, place of defense, and the mighty fortress. One of the greatest threats to the badger comes from the black eagle. The rock badger has amazingly keen eyesight. He can detect movement up to one mile away. Even if the black eagle is up against the sun, the badger will spot him. The eye of the rock badger is equipped with a special membrane which filters the rays of the sun. The first badger that spots the black eagle will bark and sound the alarm. Within seconds, the rock badgers are safe inside their burrows. Christians also should warn their neighbors of the dangers of our enemies, which include sin and Satan. The badgers live together in communities, as well as affording protection from enemies, as just outlined. This also gives protection to the animal from the cold. The animals will huddle together for warmth, sometimes even lying one on top of the other. The rock badger is constantly grooming himself, and so is a clean, living companion. The hind foot, in fact, has a claw especially designed for grooming. The rock badger, then, is a unique, industrious, and amazing little creature, with many features that allow him to live a full life in his rocky, inhospitable habitat. He is one more evidence of the wonder of God's creation. There are about one billion sheep on the planet. Sheep prefer running water when they drink. Sheep have poor eyesight, but an excellent sense of hearing. If you see a sheep on its back, lend it a hand. A sheep can't get up from that position. If left on its back too long, it will eventually die. Sheep grow two teeth a year until they have eight. Sheep only have lower teeth that press against an upper palate. Sheep are defenseless. Sheep are also prone to wander from the flock. Because of this, they need a good shepherd to protect and care for them. In the Holy Bible, human beings are referred to as sheep. We too are in need of a great, good, and chief shepherd who is the Lord. John 10, 11, the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. Matthew twenty-five thirty-two and 33. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Hebrews 13, 20. Now the God of peace, that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. 1 Peter 2, 25. For ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, 
and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for me. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So far in our series, we have discovered some things about evolution. We have seen evolutionist explanation of life and the creation of the universe to be an absurd fairy tale. We have also clearly seen that evolution is wickedly in direct opposition to the Word of God. As a result, when governments adapt its teaching, evolution has helped expand tyranny, abolish human rights, and sponsor mass murder. When an individual believes evolution instead of the Word of God, his life is not directed by God in His righteousness, goodness, justice, and mercy. Our pilgrimage here is very brief. Each of us is soon going to die. We are going to stand before God, and we are going to hear the question in one way or another, why should you be admitted? into paradise. In fact, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask you to answer that right now as if you were talking to God. God, you should admit me into heaven because. There are only two answers. I hope yours was the right one. I was asked that question 46 years ago. My answer was I've tried to live a good life. I've tried to follow the Ten Commandments. I've tried to live by the golden rule. I've tried to do the best I can. You notice that each of those sentences began with the same pronoun, I. I, 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 ad infinitum, ad nauseum. That's one of the religions in the world. It's very simply that, I. I will get to heaven because of what I have done. I will therefore become my own savior. I will therefore be in competition with that person who claims to be the savior of the world. The only other religion, and my answer to that question today would be simply this. Father, the only reason that you should admit me into paradise is your son died in my place on a cruel cross to pay my way in. I have no other hope but Jesus.